Um, and I'm completely like, you know, just riffing on the parameters here. I have no idea what these will be eventually. We um, love you riffing. It's but, fun. Yeah. But the idea Speaking is that you can kind of just describe what backend API call you're trying to make. And HTTP resource will use HTTP client under the hood with the whole interceptor stack and everything and the testing story behind it. Um, and it's just kind of a different interface to HTTP client. This is kind of the next step that we're thinking about, right? Is, okay, we have the core resource API, which wraps an asynchronous operation currently using kind of the promise contract, but a higher level thing might be a resource that is based on HTTP client. Um, and I'm completely like, you know, just riffing on the parameters here. I have no idea what these will be eventually. We um, love you riffing. But, it's fun. Yeah. But the idea Speaking is that you can kind of just describe what backend API call you're trying to make. And HTTP resource will use HTTP client under the hood with the whole interceptor stack and everything and the testing story behind it. Um, and it's just kind of a different interface to HTTP client. So this is why you're excited about the resource type, because we, we can make a resource. Yes. Love it. OK, Pavel has a hand up. And while he's asking his question, can you drop the link for this uh, HackMD in our chat for us? I can do that. So fun. Thank you. Pavel? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> oh, Pavel, has, have you met Daniel yet, Alex? Oh, oh no, <laughs> I haven't. This yeah. is Daniel. Uh, Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. Well, my hands are full, but I have a question because I had two, just two ideas from Rx. Um, is there, maybe I would say it's opening Pandora's box, but who knows? <laughs> uh, two things what I would be curious about the Rx is first, the injection is working there when it comes to like injecting surveys or something. Because you showed the HTTP client on the Rx resource. Yeah. So that would be uh, probably the point for uh, that we are able to provide the Yeah, there, there's, there's no inject here. You can't do that, for example. Um, oh. So you would, have to, you would have to inject HTTP client in your component and then like. Outside. All right. Yeah, okay. you do it in the closure. And the second question, is this bounded to be only the HTTP observable or we can put the whatever observable in there? Whatever so, observable you, you, your heart desires. Oh, so behavior subject could be as well. Yes, yeah. All right. All right. So the, the um, Rx resource, right, today is wrapping the normal resource. And that means this has promise semantics, right? Mm -hmm. So it will wait for the first value that shows up and then consider the resource like done um, and unsubscribe from the stream. So you, you can put a behavior subject there, but it will only ever get the initial value, if that makes sense. Because um, yep. behavior subject yeah. is going to emit immediately, and then you have no other. Um, mm -hmm. So there's yeah. not much yeah. advantage to doing that. Um, right. OK. Because you, yeah. No, oh, that that's completely makes sense. Yeah, I I was just yeah. curious how much far we can go through it, and what is yeah. the limit of, of that. <laughs> and and this is one of the questions in the RFC, right? Is like, um, we probably will have a streaming version of resource, where you can it can yeah. return multiple values over time. And should RX resource have the same mechanic of like, getting multiple that's values from the observable? Yeah, that's what, um, my, what I was getting in my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of uh, kind of discussion of this, I think, on on like Twitter and then GDE channels of um, Rx resource kind of being weird in a sense that it, it only processes one value. And what people really want is like, oh, I want my observable of the request, right? And then I want to like pipe this through things and then like get a resource out at the end. Um, and so that that would kind of look like I have my request stream, right? And then I like write a switch map on that to get values from the server, and then like I make a resource out of this, um, and then like you know you know to resource, right? Um, something like this. <laughs> um, but that actually doesn't work. Um, you cannot build this API, and the reason. <laughs> Yeah, the reason is that um, 
resource is all about knowing what state the request is in, being able to say, oh, you know, you are currently waiting on data to load versus the data is actually present. Um, mm -hmm. And in this conception of the API, we actually have no idea like which requests start fetching and when. Um, <laughs> and so the resource kind of cannot know its current state. Mm -hmm. So maybe rather than saying the resource, the resource is not the data, the resource is like the pipe that the data is coming through. Yeah, the resource represents kind of the, you know, the concept that I need data from somewhere else, right? There's an external resource that I'm declaring that is supposed to be giving me the, like, the data returned by this API call. Um, and the resource object is telling you, like, how that operation is progressing. And we need that, for example, if you want like the router to have some understanding of, okay, I need to fetch this resource before I can show this route. The router needs to know not only what is the value, but like when that value is actually ready. I'm really understanding why you're excited about the type. Yeah. Because we can start passing this even not even not even just within Angular, but with anyone we want. Yeah, exactly.